Hey, how's it going, everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. I am super excited to be hanging out with Carlos Polop and Yago. Forgive me, I don't know a hey, last name or whatever, but it's great to see you both again. Uh, we got a chance to hang out over at DEF CON. Uh, and hey, look, you two were presenting some incredible research, some really cool stuff you were digging into. And I'm flattered. I thought, you know what? Hey, maybe we could just kind of put this out on YouTube for more folks to be able to see uh, and get to see the incredible research. Um, but Carlos, Yago, I don't know if you need to do any introductions or we should just start the party and dive in. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for letting us come here to your channel to show our research. Um, it's great to be able to share these kind of things with, with so much public. So thank you for, for the opportunity. And well, we definitely dedicate a lot of time to, to this. So I hope that people watching this video are going to really enjoy the technique we are going to be presenting. Um, I don't have anything more to add. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I think I'm not really good with words. So sometimes I just let Carlos speak. Okay. Um, so let me share my screen to, to get it started. Well, in, in case you don't know about me, I'm the guy behind Hacktricks and Peace. And in case you don't know about, um, about Diago, he's a really great, uh, binary exploitation guy who focuses on low level stuff. So I think we, we made a really good combination for this, uh, for this research. I suppose you are seeing the index in my screen, right? Cool. So um, we want to present you, John, uh, this technique that is actually a combination of several techniques that we have been improving um, along two years, something like that. So of course, first of all, we are going to be talking about what are we going to be talking about? This what is this. Then we are going to explain the first technique we developed, uh, DDXSEC. And then we are going to get started with a lot, a lot of different demos. Uh, but the basic goal of these uh, techniques are always going to be to load um, to load programs in memory in, in Linux and get to execute them from, lin from, from Linux memory. And actually, let me explain you this better with the first slide. Why is this? Um, why this? So first of all, um, a couple of years ago, or maybe more, maybe three years ago, I, I was working with with uh, well, with my boss and he told me, hey, we are moving everything to, to distro list, to distro list containers. And later we will talk about what is this. Uh, but if you don't know about this, it was called maybe the new and hackable stuff like maybe three, four years ago. And this was because, well, you have so so little, so uh, few things in these kind of containers that it's not very, very complicated to, to, to exploit them, even if you find a, a vulnerability. So uh, I start thinking about, hey, OK, so uh, I don't have many permissions in this release in these kind of very restrictive containers. I don't even have write permissions. How can I execute something? And of course, the first thing I thought was, OK, well, in Windows is super simple to just inject something in memory and, and execute it, even in, in other processes. So why not uh, doing this in, in Linux? Well, it turns out that in Linux is much more complicated. You need to have much more permissions. And, and actually, there isn't or there wasn't any state of the art, art techniques that allowed you to do this in a, in a very simple way. So we have started uh, well, creating our own techniques, which the first one was called DDXSEC, that next uh, Diago is going to explain you about it. But before it, I want to let you know about the state of the art back then. Uh, we had this blog from sector, se from sector 7 when he was explaining that maybe a, a cell code injected in memory in, in Linux could allow you to call the syscall memfd create, which is going to be a file descriptor in memory where you can uh, write to it it is going to be written in memory, but you can actually execute it from the file system. So if you have this previous permission I told you about where you are in a system where you have a read-only uh, file system, you can still create files via this memfd create syscall, write to them and execute it. So this was a great way to bypass this read-only permission. Although this was quite noisy because, well, this is a pretty weird syscall to call. So uh, an EDR checking for this will probably catch you, but it was a very, pretty, pretty neat technique. Um, then we also saw this uh, tweet from David Wuhan, where you can see that he's actually overriding the, um, let me check, Proxelf mem. Uh, do we have Proxelf mem here? Well, it will be- Yeah, yeah right. it, it, uh, the first command it executes is a CD. Okay, to the, okay uh, yeah. To the, proc F, uh, to the proc file system directory of the shell. And there it uh, reads the, the syscall file, which uh, holds the information of the current syscall the process is doing. That way we can know um, uh, the, the instruction pointer of the process uh, and by, we bypass ASLR completely. 
then create um, a file descriptor, this file uh, to the mem file. This mem file is um, a mapping, a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping of the virtual memory of the shell's process. So the shell is creating a file descriptor to this file, and this file descriptor will be inherited by the the DD. The, where is the DD? Yeah, uh, for the for the uh, yeah there. That DD will inherit uh, that file descriptor, and we are uh, redirecting its um, a output to that file descriptor in the last characters of the line. Uh, so uh, that that way, DD will be able to write to the to the memory of the of the shell, uh, and it will be writing to the instruction pointer, or well, not the current instruction pointer because. It may have changed uh, since we last uh, checked it in when we read from the um, from the syscall file. Uh, but we 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 kind of have um, an idea of where will the the program pass again. So we write with DD to that place uh, since the since the file descriptor is inherited um, with writing permissions. DD will will be able to write there. And we are just modifying the the shell code, well, the code that um, the shell will execute, um, and kind of just put there whatever we want. We can we can we can run uh, native code, which which is uh, the the target. Uh, a small a small uh, addendum I want to make is that um, although uh, I think uh, the uh, yeah the the sector seven block. Uh, was from uh, 2018. Uh, we we didn't know about it. Uh, this this couple of pieces uh, were really really niche. Um, these these examples, these uh, proof of concepts are nothing more like that. They are like something really really experimental, and nobody <laughs> just. A couple of of people knew about about these 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 methods, and we didn't. Uh, that that's why uh, Carlos uh, asked me, and and then I developed DDXEC, which works um, well. Back then, it worked. Uh, really, it was really 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 similar to the to the one to the technique that Sector Seven uh, posted. And then when I learned about um, the, that tweet. That we showed uh, from David, uh, I, I changed it. I changed it. Um, so the idea um, uh, back then, uh, we we would make a DD overwrite its own memory. Mm, that's because we can't write to a mem file uh, of another process because uh, there is a a, a patch. That added to the kernel not not so many years ago uh, called JAMA. Um, so JAMA uh, prevents uh, all kinds of uh, ptrace um, related um, actions, like well, ptracing a process or uh, reading the proc file system entry of that process, uh, unless you are root or unless you are that process. So we couldn't make DD write uh, to the memory of any other process. Uh, so DD had to write itself, overwrite itself. It was uh, a self-modifying DD, I think we called it. Uh, and that's why it was called DDXEC. Um, and uh, well, David had this amazing idea of using a leaked, uh, well, kind of leaked uh, hand handler, just using Windows jargon, I guess. Uh, this inherited file descriptor actually uh, to um, because the, the shell can create a file descriptor with the right permissions uh, to its own mem file and this file descriptor will be inherited by DD. So now DD has a way to overwrite the shell's memory and this has the advantage because now we don't need to disable uh, ASLR. Uh, we needed to disable the ASLR because to DD, we need to t uh, tell it where to um, uh, write, the, the address at which it needs to write in the argument. 
So after DDE exists, we need to, uh, to place, to prepare in the argument, uh, the address where it needs to write. And if DDE doesn't exist, we can't uh, know the, um, this, this address because of ASLR. So we needed to disable ASLR. This wasn't a huge problem because there is a sys call called personality, which allows to disable ASLR for a, for a single process. And there is a tool uh, that is present in many, in many, in many Linux distributions called uh, setarch. Um, in Alpine, it was called a uh, Linux uh, 32 Linux or Linux. Well. Yeah, Linux 32 or Linux 64, uh, depending on whether you are on 32 or 64 bits. And that allowed you to, well, to uh, perform that uh, personality syscall and disable the, um, the, the ASLR for a single process, a process of yours. Of course, you can't, you can't disable the ASLR for a, a root process. That, that would be ignored. Um, so that, that's it. That, that was the, the advantage of, of uh, the inherited file descriptor, that uh, now we are uh, writing to the memory of another process the the shells the process the shells memory uh, and the shell already exists and we can and we can read uh, the the maps uh, file in in its prog file system entry or the syscall the syscall file which holds well this information it, it holds actually more information in in in, in a way uh, so that that's that's a big improvement. So now, um, my what, what I what I made uh, that is uh, different to these uh, to these techniques uh, in the end is just um, making a, a shell code uh, or well, a kind of uh, the tool which is written in shell scripting because we can't execute any binary we want, so it had to be uh, made in, in shell scripting. Uh, which was really awful. Um, the tool, what, what makes is create a shell code um, to, that will load the, the binary in memory. It also, uh, the, the shell code will also uh, load uh, the loader and prepare the stack. Uh, so how, how does it do this? Um, each binary uh, has a series of, of headers that uh, tells the kernel uh, or the loader. Um, if it is a program, it will be to the kernel. Um, what pieces of, of itself need to be in what uh, at what addresses um, and the permissions and things like that. So um, the this shell this shell script will analyze. Uh, the, the binary we want, the binary's headers uh, of the binary we want to run, know which mappings, at which addresses it, it, it needs to create a map, uh, to call a map uh, with uh, read and write permissions, then write uh, a piece of the, of the binary there, prepare the permissions and stuff like that. And then do the same for the loader, then prepare the stack because the kernel is the one who prepares the stack, who maps the stack, and in the stack uh, uh, lay the the arguments and the environment and uh, a piece of information really, really, really important called a uh, auxiliary vector, which holds information from the kernel to the loader. Um, this vector uh, has information like um, the the address, the base address of the binary, or where are the headers of the binary, or at which address is loaded the, the loader, or things like that. Um, and that's it. And once this is all set up, just jump to the loader. The loader will see, uh, will, will parse the binary in memory, see the, the dependencies it needs, load these dependencies, link them, and then jump to the binary. And, and that will be it. So that, 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 that's that's the exec. <laughs> okay, so you think this was this was clear? Um, like a, a summary at the end, we're just going to be overriding um, proxy of mem, preparing all the well, all the stack and all the parts of the of the binary, and then calling the loader. 
just a very, very, very quick summary in a, in an amazing uh, cell code created dynamically with cell script, which like if you try to read that code, you will get crazy, man. It's 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 it looks obfuscated and and it's not. Uh, I don't know. Man. <laughs> only only a mad guy would have created that, to be honest. I mean, it is because um, shell scripting uh, is is lo looks like it was put together by I don't know by some kind of uh, mad person. Uh, it, it is it is really 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 ugly. Uh, um, moreover, if you uh, can't use um, very useful extensions like the ones added by Bash or set as H or things like that, these shells uh, don't uh, interpret uh, POSIX uh, scripting, uh, POSIX shell scripting. They have uh, a lot of useful, well, uh, improvements, extensions to the to this POSIX. So the problem is that uh, I wanted this to run on Alpine. And Alpine has a really, really shitty uh, uh, shell, which is Ash. Ash from BCBox, because Alpine only has BCBox. And I, I kind of get it because BCBox is supposed to be really, really small, which they fail. <laughs> but uh, I mean, BCBox is like 800 megabytes. Okay. So, um, well, um, so uh, it, it is really, really close to POSIX. It has a couple of extensions. I'm not really sure uh, which ones, but uh, I, I have to discard all these extensions like uh, switch cases or dictionaries. So, things like that I couldn't use them uh, I I really I I have to so when I ported the the script to um, uh, to uh, ARM64 uh, there are pieces uh, of shell code yeah thank you yeah did you say that sh lower 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 more, more, lower, 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 lower. There. Oh, that upper, 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 upper. Saw, yeah. <laughs> more? <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there. That is like um, a dictionary. That's I, I had, I had to improvise a dictionary. So, uh, that's a string. The S S C array is a string. Is uh, and a string, just a string, which uh, where each entry is separated from each other using new lines, and the and the name from the value is separated using a tabulator. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, so um, if you can go now uh, up <laughs> to all the way, all the way to the top. Mm, yeah, it's a C chunk. Stitching in the line twenty-seven, that function uh, is 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 used to um, it, it uses it receives uh, as a as an argument uh, a name of uh, of this dictionary, and then <laughs> just uh, return. Re yeah, I tell you one thing: if, if I find like if someone finds this in his computer and he calls me hey can you reverse this to let me know how this is how this is working man i wouldn't like to be that person <laughs> I, 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 yeah I, because I, because I, I need to run this in evil uh, yeah because this this um because because uh, the shell code is created uh, well if you can go now down <laughs> Like in the in the function, I think uh, no, 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 not not all the way down. Um, just a bit up. Uh, 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 more like there, like there. Yeah, yeah. In the line in the line one hundred eighty two, you have an example of 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 the usage of that of that function, uh, because <laughs> because of. So many peculiarities of how uh, subshells work and how 
you can return values uh, from a function in shell scripting and things like that, uh, I needed to use an evil. <laughs> and I mean, uh, shell scripting is something we can talk about uh, like for a whole day. So I would I would stop right now. <laughs> we do we move forward and see an example <laughs> of how to use it? Let's do it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be using the DXA, uh, as we explained, this is useful for executing from memory. So we are going to be do, uh, using it in a mini cube, in a cube inside my computer, which is a Mac OS with M M1 ARM. And we are going to be applying read-only and no exec um, flags to the file system. So we are not going to be able, so this is a very real scenario where you have uh, compromised support with that just have these uh, security context flags to true. And then you cannot just download stuff and execute them. You need to do it from memory because this is going to be preventing you from doing any other, uh, any download and execute stuff. So we are going to be using DDXEC to execute different um, different binaries. So, let me change this. Okay. So, um, let me check this is working. QCTL get pods. We have Alpine. This is the one we are going to be compromising. So we get here. We get a, a so here. Now let me show you that actually this is read only. So if I execute mount and we check this, we can see that the root is mount as read only. If I try to do things like, hey, let's try to write in TMP, we get some errors. Um, I have already run this, but I can rerun it. We uh, download the dxec.sh. And also I have already download kubectl because it takes some seconds. So I already have it here. Um, if I give it executions permission. So actually this is something fun. Let me show you that the SHM actually is read write, but it has the no exec flag. So even if we can actually write into this directory, we cannot execute things. So if I try to execute kubectl, we get permission denied, even if we have the, the execution bit uh, turned on. Yeah, I think it is worth noting that uh, SHM, uh, which is, um, it, it is it is like just uh, in memory. It is a RAM. Yeah, it is it is worth noting. And also that actually, in some, there is a way you don't need to to write the script. So you can actually uh, execute this completely firelessly without creating a file anywhere. Not just not in disk, but also not not anywhere. Yeah. Basically, imagine if you would you just um well, you just download it and put it in here instead of saving the exact to disk. But I just download it to to make it simple to to understand. So what we are going to be doing here is to pass the binless uh, binary in base sixty four to the dxec and we are going to be indicating the R zero and the R one. So we are just going to be executing from memory um, ls. So we do this and we wait a couple of seconds. It will work. Okay, it takes. Oh, that is seconds. so cool. Yeah, yeah. that that's yeah. because it, it it takes so long because if you see the script, uh, there are like mm, uh, lots and lots. Uh, I don't know, thousands of of processes being executed to pass these binaries. It it really isn't uh, very efficient. Um, so here I your, try to. Yeah. Here I try yeah. to load, yeah, as, 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 as Diego said, it's it's very slow. Uh, actually, the next uh, iteration that we are going to show you is much faster. I just wanted to show you that if we try to load kubectl, we have uh, 47 megabytes. It's going to take several minutes. I can tell you that it worked because I just executed before uh, starting this recording. Um, so it definitely works, but it's going to take some, some minutes. Anyway, this is great because when you compromise some kind of container inside Kubernetes, you definitely want to run uh, kubectl in order to well to to enumerate it. If not, you need to use curl, even if you have curl installed, and that's a nightmare. So that was one of the main reasons why I needed this kind of techniques uh, back in the day, 
because man, I, I it was just impossible to enumerate this machine because I couldn't just download anything. I just I could just use what, what was already installed. That usually are very very um very few things. So this was like a, a game changer for this kind of uh from this kind of uh, attacks inside very restricted environments. And actually, um, let's explain very briefly if you want, Diego, the detections that we are also bypassing. Mm. Yeah, so th this is kind of funny. Um, so th there was an EDR um, which started detecting uh, the usage of DDXEC because, uh, well, EDRs and Linux, I get it, uh, they aren't really advanced right now. I hope they will get better. Uh, so they are based on command line. So they are just uh, checking uh, the, the profile system and seeing the command line of uh, each process. And if you detect um, something that it doesn't like, well, it just shuts, uh, shuts it down and, and file a, a report. Uh, so what it started detecting was um, DD. If if you if you if the command line contained a DD, well, it, if if the if the command line was of a program called um, DD, and in some place in the arguments there was the argument seek, which I guess it doesn't make many, any sense because seek is like an, an argument you can actually have and it will be very legitimate and common, I guess. So I don't know, if you called DD with the seek argument with any value, uh, uh, it, will, it will shut it down and file a report. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, I, I found a way to, to bypass it. Uh, and that way uh, gave way to uh, a modification of the technique. So uh, previously, what we were using was DD to uh, seek and write to the mem through the main file. Um, but we can just use DD to seek and then write with uh, with uh, any other thing. That's because of a, of a peculiarity that um, file descriptors, what POSIX file descriptors have. Uh, which is that um, an inherited file descriptor um, will be the same as uh, uh, throughout all the processes that that have that have it. So, um, if you have a process and this process uh, has a file descriptor and then forks, then you have two processes that have the same file descriptor, and that file descriptor is exactly the same. Um, even if uh, one of these processes that are actually also the same or almost the same because they are a fork, uh, if one of them executes and well, it makes an ex exec be syscall and starts running all, uh, all, any other process, um, this process will also inherit this file descriptor, and it will also it, it will have it, the same file descriptor. It is the same, the same, the structure. The F F D uh, I can't remember the name of the structure in the kernel. Uh, that same structure is the same. It's the same place in memory in, in in kernel's memory. So if one of these processes seek through the file and and, and leaves the file descriptor with um, a function a file pointer inside the file at another place. Um, any other process that shares this file descriptor will see the pointer inside the file modified too, and we can and we can see it uh, in this example, um, which is uh, I, I write some text to a file called uh, txt, then create a file descriptor. The, the third, the, uh, three, the, so the the file descriptor three will be now a file descriptor with reading permissions uh, to that um, file, and then. Um, tell DD to write to that file at the place, uh, well, at the third byte. So it will seek uh, to the third byte, well, to the fourth, actually, uh, because it starts at zero. Um, write nothing, partly because count is equal to zero, and partly because uh, this file descriptor doesn't have permission to write. 
Um, so DD actually fails, but we can see it because uh, the standard error is redirected to null. And then if we try to read from this file descriptor, the third one, from this file, we can see that the, the file descriptor, the pointer, the file pointer of that file descriptor has actually changed. And we haven't modified the file. If we now read the file, the file is complete. So now we can use DD to, to seek through the file. And we don't need to do this using seek. There's another argument that you can use, which is skip. So that's how I, I modify DD, uh, DD exec to use the skip instead of seek. We, now we tell uh, DD to read from, from the file, even though it can't, because the file descriptor in DD exec is created using uh, writing permissions, not reading permissions. So we tell DD to read from the file. Uh, skip is the argument you use to tell uh, to seek to, to a, a place inside a reading file, inside the source file, and seek is in the, in the destined file. So um, now we are using just, I was just using DD to seek using skip, so the EDR wouldn't detect it, and then just write using something like printf from the, from the very own shell. So we will have the shell of writing its own memory again. Uh, so then I had this idea, which is, um, I think we can go to the next uh, slide. Um, the next slide, uh, yeah. there was, yeah. OK, so we have, we have here that, that example uh, of how we can, of how this, this is done. Um, so yeah, in, in this case, I'm using base64 to write the shellcode to, uh, to the mem file. Um, uh, and DD is just being used to to seek, uh, but if if that um, greater than would uh, were to be changed to uh, less than and seek to uh, skip, uh, it would work. Um, and uh, yeah, so now I had to find well, I had uh, the idea that. Um, there may be other 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 files, other programs, other commands um, common in in many distros uh, that could be, be that could be used to seek, because now we are not using the seeker as a writer too. We are just using to seek. The problem that that I, I had in the beginning is that DD was the only command. Uh, that allowed you to seek and write, but now we only needed to seek. So I, I tried with tail and with compare and with hex dump, and I think uh, xxd also, um, and they all we can use all of them. Uh, if if you're a Harry Potter fan, you may get this <laughs> joke. Uh, so there you have um, and. Uh, I made the joke to call this uh, everything exec instead of DD exec. You can check, you can choose the, the seeker, and that that will be the binary used. Uh, just a couple of seconds. There, uh, if you if you go to the to this to the code of DD exec, uh, to the end, the bottom of it, there you have it in five twenty eight. Uh, starts the this if where where the um, the seeker which which has been choose uh, mm, is <laughs> yeah um, what is xxd man you didn't add it mm, yeah because xsd is like really odd it, it is uh, seldom present in 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 this stress. so I don't know in the in the readme I I put it as an example so uh, of how you can uh, specify uh, yeah exam but you you can also um, through environment variables you can also use X, XXD if you go to the readme there is an example there of how, of how you can use um, X, XXD. 
The read me, read me. Yeah, I'm going there, man. <laughs> you have there the arrow to go back. Yeah, uh, the and everything is sec. So you have the um, you find, if you find another valid seeker not implemented in the script, you may still use it. Setting the seeker arcs file. So you tell it to use as a seeker xxd, and then you you tell it how to use it. You tell it that it needs to receive the parameter uh, dash s, and then the the offset that, uh, where. Uh, so uh, uh, you can show that that will work too. <laughs> I don't know. So <laughs> any questions? I don't know. Oh, that's so cool. I, I, I love that you're kind of within the restraints of just a regular vanilla shell. <laughs> yeah. So using all those like classic, oh, living off the land binaries to just then do literally anything you want all in memory is incredibly cool. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Hmm. Mm. I mean, that's a piece of code. Try something we haven't tried before, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's uh, that's code I, I haven't checked in a while. I, I may have broke something. Uh, it certainly worked back then. SSH for this? I no, 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 it, no, no. I was I placed the uh, SSH just an example. Well, anyway. Um... Just the, the the goal of this was that um, we found out that some idea was checking that if you execute DD with a very long argument, like a very lar large... No, 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 it didn't matter. I... I no. I, 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 no, 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 it was only if DD and seek. I that, that's, yeah, yeah. Even, seek. yeah, yeah, even if and you uh, made like a, a, symbolic, a symbolic link, if you made a symbolic link and called DD using another name, it did, it wasn't detected. Yeah, but I, but I remember that they also check for a large number because a lot of system administrators and tools are going to be using DD. So no, no, no. Uh, that, that, that was just a guess uh, I made and I failed. Uh, it, it was, yeah, because I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that. Uh, it didn't matter the the size of the argument. So I I have a friend with the CDR with access to the CDR, uh, and we started doing tests. Um, and that that's it. That, that was it. Uh, it only checked for DT and seek, nothing more. And I I find that uh, kind of pathetic. <laughs> Ooh, DR, man, cool. Yeah, I, I mean. I get it. They are, they are just starting with Linux, but I don't know. Okay, so um, until now, uh, we have talked about how to well, how to load a binary using the DDXX technique, uh, proxy of main, syscall, using different uh, binaries that perform LC, as Joe mentioned, uh, just doing some living on the land, uh, using some living of the land binaries. Um, but we have only facing, we have been only facing um, a very restrictive um, uh, environment like a row, alpine, cell with read only. But there are even more restrictive environments you can face, like distroless ones that we have spoken about in a little bit at the beginning. But I would like to tell you more about what these are in case uh, people watching the, this doesn't know what is a distroless container. So I asked GPT-4. And it told me that these source container are only contain the bare minimum components necessary to run a specific application. So if you have, for example, uh, a Python Flask uh, distroless container, you're going to be having Python install, you're going to be having Flask and the other library dependencies installed, but you might not even have cell, you might not even have cat, ls, or any other binary that you are used to, to find inside the, inside the container. So basically, the source containers, containers tries to increase the security by removing everything that is actually not used. And it also makes uh, containers more uh, more simple or more lightweight. So it's actually it's actually pretty great. Like even if we are going to be bypassing some of the uh, well security measures that this uh, this tool is has, it's actually pretty good because the containers are are going to be running better because they have less less stuff that they doesn't need. Anyway, the thing is that imagine that you find yourself um, with an RC vulnerability inside a container and you start executing things such as ls, cat, etc, password, all this stuff, but you don't have those binaries, like you don't have anything, like you're going to get crazy because anything you usually do, you're not going to be able to do. 
So actually, let me show you in a very quick demo uh, what I'm talking about. Um, so first of all, I'm going to be connecting here to, to a Kubernetes cluster that is going to be in, in AWS. So we know that everything, all, all this has already worked in my mini cube cluster in macOS ARM. Now we are going to a Kubernetes cluster in AWS with, with AMD64. So everything is going to be working in all these environments. And now we are going to be trying to get a cell inside this uh, distroless flask pod. We can get a cell, we execute the less, but we don't have it. We try to execute cat, it is fast, but we don't have it. Anyway, in this in these cases, you can still use built-ins such as read in order to, to read, for example, your the password. There is something you can do just because you still have you still have a cell. And actually, there is a nice uh, post here that um, indicates how you can get uh, how you can get arbitrary code execution, like execute a, a proper binary using OpenSSL, which usually is going to be present in these distroless containers. But still, uh, you can fix this this uh, attack by removing this OpenSSL binary. Um, so I wouldn't say that it's going to be super, super resilient, this technique. So we wanted to, to search for something more resilient with the memory. And also, of course, you can go to other type of uh, distress containers that doesn't even have a cell. So you try to get a cell and you will get final phone in path. So like imagine like you have this RC and, and you don't even have a cell. Like, well, I don't know what you are going to do, but it will be very, very mad. Uh, at, at this kind of situation. So um, now that we know what is a distroless container, we have already done this demo. Let me tell you about how you can still abuse this scenario. So imagine that the same case I told you, you have compromised a, a web application that is running in Flask. Um, usually when a web application, when, when any application is running something like it's executing a command, usually they are going to be having a cell install because the way platforms usually, um, frameworks usually execute something is to call the cell and from the cell call what you want to execute. So if you don't have the cell, even the regular ways to, to, well, to run binaries from frameworks are going to be failing. So if you have a raw command injection, usually you will have some kind of cell. So that's interesting. And if you have a cell, of course, I told you that you can abuse buildings. But even if you don't have a cell, like, man, if the web application is running in Python or Node or PHP, Python is going to be installed. So you can get a reverse cell with Python. You can get a Python reverse cell. So, hey, still you can, uh, you can still move forward with your usual way to compromise um, environments, even if it's going to be looking a little bit weird because everything you need to do is going to be Python. But also uh, Python, Perl, and Ruby give us something more uh, in order to get uh, execution from memory. Python, Perl, and Ruby by default are going to be having these awesome libraries that allows you to call the direct syscalls. So you actually don't need to do anything weird. You can just call the memfd create syscall, store in that file in memory, the binary you want to execute like kubectl, and then execute it. That's exactly what we told uh, when we present the David Buchanan and the Sector 7 post. They were doing that. They were calling uh, memfd create from, from memory, creating this new file, storing anything there, and, and calling it. So I'm not going to be doing this demo because this is actually not our technique, but I just wanted to let you know that, hey, even if we are going to present in another technique, in these specific languages, you have an easier way to, to execute things for, for memory. And actually, everything is very well written in this GitHub repo called fileless elf exif, which basically allows you to give a binary. It will transform it, for example, in Python to a very uh, very short Python code that will have the binary you pass in base64. And the Python code, we will see it. It's basically going to be calling memory create, loading the base64 decoded, and executing it. So let me show you the, the video for this. So here we are running, here we are running a, a Python distroless container, uh, which is vulnerable to RC in this port that we are going to be accessing. We call ls, we can see ls is not there, cat is also not there, but we can see that Python is present in the system. 
So now we are going to be abusing the, the vulnerability to get a reverse self with Python. Basically, we are going to get a Python reverse self. Here you can see Python import socket, blah, blah, blah. So at some point in the video, here you import sockets, a process, um, yeah. So we get a Python reverse self, like a bash reverse self, but executing Python. Um, and now we are going to get inside an Ubuntu machine, which is going to be our attacker machine inside the same network. Um, so we get inside the, the Ubuntu machine. And here is the, the place where we are going to be preparing everything. We have downloaded fileless elfexec. Now we are downloading kubectl because we are going to be preparing this, this Python stuff. Actually, let me stop this right here. Can you see just uh, at the bottom? Cool. So here we are calling the fileless execute uh, Python uh, script with kubectl. So we are creating a kubectl that is executed through Python through memory. Whoa, sorry about that. Uh, so we are preparing a Python that will execute kubectl uh, from memory very easily. Now we execute it to check that this is actually working. It executes kubectl, so it looks good. We are still in our machine. The rubber cell is still here. And now we are going to be modifying a little bit the code because if we execute this as is in our rubber cell, when it finishes the execution, we are going to be killing our rubber cell. So we want to create a, a fork and execute it from a fork. So here we can see that basically we are we have kubectl in base64. Um, we are, oh, come on, man. I'm trying to stop the video. Do, 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 do. In base64, and we are actually, um, let me check syscall. Um, I'm missing something here. So this is called should be the syscall from memfd create. And here should be the file descriptor that we create when we call. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we are calling the syscall memfd create right here. And then we are writing the base64 decode of kubectl in the, in the file descriptor in memory that you, we just created. And then we are just calling exec to execute it. This is basically what, what this Python is doing. Very, very, very simple. Mm. So we prepare it so we don't kill our rubber cell. Now we are going to be listening in a in a web server so we can download this Python from our rubber cell. This is the big team where we got the Python rubber cell. So we import your uh, URL request. Now we get we download our Python code. CTL. And now we just need to call exec because Python is going to be executing what we just download and we will have execute kubectl. So basically we, we didn't use our technique, but this is a pretty neat way to just execute something from memory. But you have the problem that you need Python per or Ruby. What happened if we get to node? Well, that's a problem because in node there is no direct way to execute a syscall of your choice. So Again, we can get a node reversal. Even if there is no cell, you can still get a, a node reversal. You can still use node to enumerate the system. But we can also do some kind of DDXSEC style in order to create a new process that is going to be triggering the well, the DDXSEC execution, writing, overriding proc self mem, and calling the syscall memfd create. So this way, from the parent process, we can now load the stuff inside um, inside the new uh, file descriptor, creating memory in the children process, and execute it from there. So basically, we are just creating, spawning a children process in order to load our cell code and just get into execute arbitrary uh, syscalls. And let me show you this in a in a in a very fun demo. So this is actually the most complex demo, I think. So I hope this is going to be working. Let me move this here. Okay. So first thing we are going to be doing is getting in the in the machine we are going to be getting a rubber cell. So let me check that I don't have any process uh, listening. We don't have anything, so we are going to be getting the rubber cell here. Um, also, um, there is. Actually, let me show you. Qctl get pods. There is a pod that is called uh, Distroless Express Prototype Pollution Pod. Actually, all these pods, all these examples that I'm showing you, John, 
uh, can be accessed here in this uh, in this uh, GitHub repo, distrolsrc in my repository. And actually, this is the explanation of the distroless containers. So here we are we are basically calling uh, this one the distroless prototype pollution pod. That if we go to the um, if we go sorry here to the Docker file, we can see that at the end we are using the Google image for distroless containers using Node.js. So we have our express web application running over distroless in in a Google uh, image. Cool. So let's get back to the demo. Um, I need to mirror the port 3000 in my current machine from, from this vulnerable one. And actually this could be a little bit weird. This is not a raw um, RC. These are an, an RC through a prototype pollution vulnerability, but I'm not going to be explaining it. More information can be found in hack tricks, for example. Um, so I'm just going to be I'm listening right yeah. Cool. I'm just going to be executing this. And if all went good, we have now our uh, Node.js uh, reverse. Cool. So let me get back to the demo. Um, now what we could be doing is just enumerating the, the machine from, from NoOS. So I have just imported the OS library, import OS, and we could do things such as uh, OS platform to get information, OS release, or if we want some information about the network interfaces, we can just call um, OS network interfaces. As you can see, you can still enumerate from Node, even if you don't have arbitrary execution. Um, another thing you could do uh, will be to just create your own function and uh, create your, your own LS, for example. So here I have just uh, copy pasted a function you can find in the repo I just showed you. And we could just uh, execute LS root directory and we could just enumerate this. So hey, we can still build some things to, to enumerate the system. But let's get to the memory execution. Now I'm going to be copy pasting some requirements. So nothing super relevant. Um, and now I'm going to explain you. I'm going to be writing uh, a new file with the code that the children is going to execute. As, as Jago said before, these writings we are doing are not necessary, but it's easier to explain it if we are writing everything and I can explain you what is happening. So we are going to be writing this file. We write in dev SSHM because we saw before that this is the only folder where we have a uh, write access. Now we are going to be um, writing in this file the, the Node.js code we need so the new Node.js process is going to be loading inside, well, inside the syscall pointing, a pointer, this cell code that is going to be calling the syscall memfd, uh, memfd create um, inside the proc self main. So basically what this code is doing is the basic um, tweet that David Buchanan said at the beginning with a memfd create cell code, uh, but doing it from, from Node. So now we have everything created. We are going to be writing this over the file we just, uh, over this file. Now we have this content in the file. We are going to check that this is actually true. We got ls, we know that this file exists. So this looks good. Now we are going to be executing this new process. Um, and we executed it. And if it worked, this new process should have executed at the end the the, the syscall and should have created a memory a file in in memory a memory file descriptor. Um, so now I'm going to be copy pasting a new function in order to list if this is actually true. So if we go to the process, we can see that it worked. We have created this memory file descriptor that is actually called dead uh, because why not. And now, um, well, I guess this address in a new variable. And we are reaching the final point where we uh, create the download function, which basically is going to be receiving a URL, downloading it from the internet, writing it over this file descriptor so we can later execute it. Uh, or we, ex no, we don't execute it, cool. So I'm going actually to be using the download function to download kubectl over the uh, memfd, over this uh, file descriptor that we just created. We are still in the read-only no except distroless container with all these protections. So if I use fork with this 
Remember that I told you that usually these kind of platforms usually call a cell before calling the, the, the binary you want to execute. If we just call fork indicating this um, file descriptor is not going to be working because it is trying to execute a cell that doesn't exist. So in order to achieve the execution of the exec syscall directly from node, we need to use these special parameters. Uh, we need to indicate nothing here, and then in the exec path, indicate actually the file we want to execute. If not, node is going to be using this cell. So we need exactly to use these, these parameters. So if we do this, we have executed now kubectl from memory. Um, just by executing the, the previous the previous uh, cell code. I don't know, man, what do you think? That's freaking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That is so cool. Oh. And it's and it's about to get even even better <laughs> with the um so up 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 until now we have been doing the well the DDXec technique, but actually Diago created something better, or actually he demonized the DDXec in C so we can we can use it uh, properly. So do you want to explain Jago, why we have this haha -ha, loopy the exec go burn slide right here? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't know if, if you know the, the, this meme, which is, um, yeah, uh, now you can't, I don't know, do, do something and uh, like, haha, <laughs> anything goes brr. So it, this would be like, no, you can't, you can't just. Uh, Run any binary you want in a known exec binary uh, environment. Haha, <laughs> the exec over. So um, a problem that did exec uh, had was that it do, it takes like uh, several seconds or even minutes in some uh, weird cases to run, um, and that will, will, will may, may be a problem. Um, so. Uh, and I had this idea of uh, maybe you can you can have a, a, um, like DDXec compiled like a binary of DDXec, and then you use DDXec to run this binary. And this binary is just uh, like a server or a, or a daemon, uh, and it stays there uh, waiting for for requests. And when it receives a request, uh, just forks. And in the fork, uh, load this process, this binary, and execute it. So um, now you just uh, need like, a couple of seconds to run this binary, uh, this daemon, uh, this loopy did exec because it's, it is just like did exec in a loop. So uh, you just need a couple of seconds uh, with the with this script, with the did exec script, uh, to load the um, the the daemon. And then use the daemon to load any any binary you want um, with the argument you want. Um, so well, uh, six stop because they are all sharing uh, the terminal. Uh, so if we want, um, uh, well, uh, th this is because we, now we are we are going to to make. I think I think that six stop shouldn't be there. <laughs> so uh, in the in the slide, I, uh, I'm saying. So we are now going to be doing um, another demo, aren't we? Uh, of uh, of um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. another another uh, environment. Yeah. So. so, uh, mm -hmm. Should I continue? Okay. So yeah, yeah as I was playing, basically this DDX, uh, we just have it in C in a loop, so it's much faster, and you can reuse it, which is the the goal because. We cannot wait 10 minutes every time we want to execute something. It's, it's not feasible. So in this case, we are going to be using a different environment just to change a little bit. We are going to be getting a PHP reversal. We are not going to be using a Google Distroless image, but a, a chain word, chain, how was Yeah, it? but I think I think Checkguard is also Google's, aren't they? No, 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 I think it's a different. No. Oh okay, okay. Different company. Yeah, it chain. it is ch chain guard. Yeah, yeah. The... It's chain guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go back just a second, 
Yeah, chain guard. So we are okay. the thing is that um initially Google released all these distroless uh, images, and maybe it's like six months ago, one year ago, these guys like re restarted this distroless stuff with their own images. So we wanted to make sure that this trick was also working in these guys' images. So that's why we we selected this scenario for this for this demo. Um, well, PSP had other limitations, which are not that, that relevant. Um, also, to, 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 also, in the previous node scenario, we use a cell code to call MemfD create, but we told you that, hey, this is kind of noisy. So we are going to be improving. Instead of calling this cell code, we are actually going to be loading uh, the DDXF loopy binary that uh, Jago created. And finally, and um, for, for the greatest last demo in this kind of scenarios, we are going to be actually executing Boosy Box in a distroless container. You know that, well, this is kind of uh, ironic because one of the goals of distroless is just to get rid of all these cells that are needed. So we are going to just recreating, uh, getting a new cell for our distroless container. So let's, let's show this demo. So I'm going to be getting, in this case, I, uh, I was I was kind of, uh, well, you can see that we don't have any cell inside the container. So I need to get a cell with PHP. Um, I was feeling lazy that day and I didn't create any PHP web application, uh, but we still need to get a reverse cell to show you how it will feel from a real reverse cell. So actually, let me check that we don't have anything. We actually have three, three, four, four, four. So imagine that we have compromised this um, this PHP application. We have some kind of uh, code injection inside PHP, and we just get a, a reverse cell, a PHP reverse cell like this one, and we will get just this. So imagine just yeah, this was the web application. We compromise it. Now we have our PHP reverse cell. And this is where the magic is, is going to be happening. Um, Diego, do you want to explain while I copy paste this stuff or do you want me to explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> now uh, the, the first uh, part, uh, well, you have passed, you have like, yeah, okay, okay. So uh, this is, we are defining, um, PHP code for another PHP is instance we are going to be executing because, well, we, we are going to make PHP overwrite itself and we don't want to lose this PHP session. So we will fork. Uh, well, yeah, see, it, it, will, it will be a fork. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, internally it will be a fork. So um, pass, the, pass the, the next thing. Mm. Okay, well, here here you can see that we are actually using the same technique as before. We yeah. are we are reading the sys call. We are writing over proc self man. So it's actually the same, but the cell code is different. Maybe you want to say a few words about this cell code. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it is just uh, a stager because the shell code we we are going to be using is actually much much greater. <laughs> it will be like it it will it will fill your screen. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, this is so like the cell code stager in order to load the, the real cell code later. So until now, it's the same. We didn't node, but with a different cell code. And, and actually, I don't know. Uh, you, you copied the shell code, the stager. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. OK, so there you, you have it. Uh, we, are, we are preparing the, um, the file descriptors, the the, this new PHP session is going to have um, the the arguments. It will it will be executed with a, a dash a, so it will be an interactive uh, session of PHP, and then uh, just uh, execute it. Yeah, there. Here. Yeah. So there we are executing it. Uh, we tell PHP uh, the um, how to to execute it. Here, Carlos. Um, made a big effort of finding how to to make PHP execute another process without using uh, a shell again, because internally, it, I think it was using uh, the function system. 
uh, system. So system is an XVE to 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 SH. Uh, so, but if you use Proc Open with an array, if you use Proc Open, I think you you told me if you use Proc Open with a um, string with a string, <laughs> it doesn't work. It uses system again. But if you use Proc Open with an array. It doesn't use system, uh, just do the the executive, and then well, we specify this this uh, the scriptures um, and well uh, where we want uh, this pipe, um, and then the, just the fun part. Mm, yeah. So we we pass through this pipe, which will be uh, the the standard in for this new session of PHP. The the code we we. Uh, prepared in a, in a string earlier, um, and then pass the the shell code, um, and the shell code will be will be read by the um, by the stager. Um, yeah, this is the shell code. Yeah, yeah, you're true. Now, no, but I, I think I think you skipped something. No, no, no. no. I no just, okay, I just okay. The 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 shell code now. So, okay, so well. the, the previous stager was expecting in a in a file in, in a in a pipe the new cell code. It was waiting for it, and now what we have done is send the real cell code to the stager. But wait, wait, wait! That that is uh, appending something. It is a concatenation. I, I think you just skipped. The, no, the no, shell no, code no, no. Is... This is this is the second part of the cell code. The first yeah, but... part is here. The second part is here. I'm, I'm not seeing your pointer. <laughs> okay, well, I, I will trust you. If it okay. fails, it is your fault. <laughs> basically, basically, all of this is the cell code. So we needed to create a, a, a stager because it was too too long to be uh, stored from the beginning in the pointer we had. Uh, yeah, it's going to work, man, yeah. no worries. Yeah, okay, okay. so uh, the, the shell code, we have just written the shell code and uh, it has been read um, by, the, by the stager. And now uh, we define a, a function just for simplicity uh, that we'll be, we will use to communicate with this shellcode. This shellcode uh, was actually created uh, from a C program, uh, which we can show uh, later. Uh, this C program can also be compiled. Uh, it, it is the, the daemon, uh, the daemon I made, the loopy DDXX. So um, right now it, it only expects requests from the standard input, but, but it can easily be adapted to use uh, kind of like a socket or something like that. Um, so I think I just stopped seeing your screen moving. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. So there we have the this function uh, that we will use to to communicate. So this uh, this daemon uh, expects first uh, an integer of thirty two bytes in little endian uh, with the size of the argument, then the argument, then the size of the binary, and then the binary. Um, and that's it. So, uh, this function is, is exactly what it does. Uh, so now we can use this uh, function um, and tell PHP to download um, some binary in whatever place we want. They will pass the arguments we want to run. Um, well, um, that false or true is, is uh, the stop argument of the function. That's because. Um, we are sharing, uh, we, or we may be sharing a terminal uh, with uh, with PHP. Um, PHP will be uh, reading at the same time uh, from the terminal as this program we are going to to be running. So when when two when two processes are trying to read from the same place, there can be a lot of problems. So. Uh, if you see the last line of the function memexec, uh, we'll uh, send a stop signal. That was <laughs> the thing uh, that I was trying to explain from uh, that slide, the six stop signal, to just uh, make uh, PHP sleep. Uh, so PHP will make itself sleep. Um, the, 
the daemon will will wake it up. So now we have it. We 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 got to to download from a server everything filelessly. We aren't writing anything anywhere um, and just execute it with with uh, the arguments we want. So um, you can you see, John, that this is much much faster than the previous DDX. Yeah. yeah, that's because it is C. It's C. Mm. You're, you're blowing my mind. The delay, <laughs> the, the, the delay, the delay you're seeing is just because um, we are downloading network over activity. over the network. Oh exactly. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is my my favorite part of the demo, where we actually get uh, a shell, and we can do things like PW. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. We we okay, are okay. No, it, we, it, we it, are in in ARM. We are in ARM, I think. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. It, it was the thing you explained before about PSP reading and not the the cell. Oh, uh, okay, are, okay. We are still in the AWS um, cluster. So yeah, we basically now got a a, a busy box inside the distro list that didn't even have a cell previously. So I think it's it's pretty neat. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. So man, like I I have ten minutes left, but there yeah. is some bonus technique. What do you want to do, guys? Uh. Well, if you can show just fast the the code of uh, the the daemon to show because there will be easier to understand how the exec works. It is just. Really easy. Uh, it is in the memexec repo. So we are in the memexec repo, and you yeah. want to see the yeah in 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 the PHP file you have the the proof of concept you, we just did. Um, there you have it, and in in there you have the C. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> I have to say like this is yeah, this yeah. is like the C version of the cell screen we saw before. Is much more easy to understand. Oh, this. Yeah. Like much more easy. Here <laughs> you can understand sense. what is happening. Super cool. Uh, and well, just yeah. Well, uh, if you go just uh, a bit, a bit uh, up, uh, yeah, that, that's the function that uh, makes the, the loading. Well, that, that's the function that prepares the stack. <laughs> uh, well, do you have well, if you go lower, 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 go lower, a bit lower. The there. In the line uh, 108, you have the auxiliary vector uh, I was talking about uh, earlier. Um, if you go lower, uh, well, you have the, the arguments, the environment, um, all that stuff. Um, uh, well, uh, the, this, this can be uh, compiled into a binary that is runnable, and it can also be, well, and that binary is from where I uh, got this shell code we are executing in in the proof of concept because I didn't want to, to write a, a shell code for x64 and for ARM64. Uh, so I wrote a program in C. It, I had to write it in a very specific way. I couldn't use uh, library functions because, because uh, I needed it to be uh, a standalone and a small. Um, so, well, I, I, well, if you go to the, to the bottom of the, you, you will see that I have a lot of functions implemented my way. So yeah, uh, there are functions implemented like, um, that are just wrappers to a syscall and there are another ones that are, uh, like mem copy or things like that. Well, uh, uh well, uh, just to go uh, quick, um, the the technique more the more interesting technique that I think um, the, the 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 one I am most proud of is Mendial Open, which is uh, like um, our resuscitation of a very very old uh, technique. Um, I think it was published in two thousand and four or two thousand and three uh, by two guys. In I don't, I don't remember their their names. One was uh, I think Turku Line and well something like that, like a Norway Norwegian name or something. I don't know. Uh, it was a, a paper um, at no login and it 
I think it got uh, very small attention um, uh, because it, it wasn't implemented. Uh, it just it was purely theoretical. Uh, they talked about uh, hooking. Uh, the idea the idea they presented was to hook to all the syscalls uh, a loader makes. Well, the loader makes um, like a map or read or open or things like that. Um, you hook to this syscall and then call to the function dlopen. This function will trigger uh, the, the loader to use all these uh, syscalls just to well, to open the shared object you want to, to load. Uh, and it will uh, read from this, from this object. Uh, the loader will also map um, chunks of this object. And stuff like that. So uh, you can um, call the open uh, with a fake file path, um, and since you are hooked to all these syscalls, you can fake them. So you detect that the loader is trying to open this fake uh, file path. Uh, so you return a fake file descriptor like. Uh, 1337 or something like that, a file descriptor that, that is never going to be used. Uh, so, um, well, if you go uh, lower, you have the, like, like, like a, the explanation. Um, so, uh, um, uh, if, uh, furthermore, uh, in subsequent uh, syscalls, um, uh, the loader will use this file descriptor. And when you de detect the use of this file descriptor, you will know it is trying to read also from your fake file uh, and fake all these readings. You have the fake file uh, somewhere in, in memory, in as is, in uh, raw, without being uh, loaded, uh, just in memory, raw. Because the, the binary, when it is in memory, uh, is different. When it is loaded in memory, is different than, it is, than how it is in disk. Um, you may have chunks of the binary here and a gap or something like that. It, ah, so uh, you, if, if the loader is trying to read from, the, from this shared object, you will just fake this, this syscall, like memcopying. You memcopy from this place to the place where the loader wants this data and stuff like that. Um, if, if the syscall is like, uh, legit, it, it isn't uh, related to your fake uh, shared object. You just let it through. Um, if you go actually to the .c file in the repo, uh, you have there like the proof of concept. Um, th there you have the well. Okay, okay. I I, I guess I, I haven't explained how I how I how to hook to the syscalls. So in this paper, they never said how to hook to the syscalls. Um, there was a guy um, named Mimix uh, in GitHub who, who made uh, an implementation. Uh, and he hooked to the syscalls um, using code signatures. So he, take, he took a library, or a loader, and in the loader, uh, so where the the calls to the function wrappers uh, to syscalls are made, copied like a chunk of this code, uh, and then uh, in the proof of concept searched for this uh, chunk of code. That's how he found in the loader the place the the call to this function wrapper, um, and then patched it, uh, patched the call to its own uh, function. That's how he hooked to the syscalls. But the problem is that uh, code signatures are unreliable because they will, they may and they will change between, between versions and even between builds of the same version. Uh, and that I think that's what made it um, not, not useful at all. Um, so my idea was to install a signal handler um, go to the main function, I think. In the signal handler, uh, well, uh, just a signal handler, and then uh, you have there in 2.9.8, uh, you have there the, um, the installation of a signal handler for the seek ill signal. 
Sigil, the signal, the signal, signal um, ill for illegal. Uh, it's a signal the kernel sends to a process when this process tries to execute an invalid um, instruction. Uh, so uh, we we get this. We install this um, with this signal handler for this signal, and then patch the the loader patch all the syscall instructions and modify them into invalid ones. Um, and then every time the loader tries to, to execute the syscall instruction, it will fault and the kernel will send uh, a, sig a signal and we, will, and we will receive a call to our, to our function. Um, then you have the the mprotect to make the loader writable. Then search syscall is just a function that makes that uh, change. And then write, uh, we switch the, the memory from writable to executable again. And then call the open with a fake lib uh, name. Um, and then we, we just have um, this uh, program. Uh, this binary uh, loaded because uh, because the loader will will have made all this work for us. So if you go to to the sigil handler, the function sigil handler, uh, yeah, uh, there you have it. Uh, we are taking from the stack all the arguments that were intended for the for the syscall and. The, in the 110 line, you have a switch to detect which syscall was. And then we, we just checked. Uh, well, you can see it in, in the open at in 141, you have where we check the, the name of the file it is trying to open uh, with our fake one uh, and return uh, a fake file descriptor, a magic file descriptor. So, um, the loader will will do all this work, and um, will load all the. Uh, the loader will think it is loading uh, a library, but we can make a binary uh, look like a library, and and thus make the loader load our our binary, and then just prepare the stack and and jump to the to the binary. We don't need to jump to the loader because. The loader already has done everything it needs to do, and this technique also have uh, has um, an advantage. Uh, well, it is in a way simpler than ddxec because ddxec what is doing is parsing all the files, um, and there are like uh, a lot of extensions to the ELF format, uh, extensions added by Sun Microsystems and GNU and things like that. Uh, and DDXEC isn't really uh, isn't very good at uh, dealing with these edge cases. So um, uh, MemDL Open has this advantage that we have already a, a, an entire loader there, uh, and we are using it. And there is also another advantage that I don't know how useful it will be, but I really really like this idea that um, if uh, if you're trying to run a binary in a in a system. You are relying that that binary uh, has present in that system all the dependencies it needs, all the libraries it needs need to be present when you are running ddxec. Uh, unless this binary is static, uh, it will have dependencies, so you can um, so you may run into problems trying to run a specific binary. So the idea with MDL Open is that you can um also do like a, a memdl open exception that you do a memdl open to load a binary and then use another memdl open inside while, while the loader is trying to load to load this binary you detect when it is trying to load all the binaries that aren't present in the system of this binary um and memdl open them again you have these libraries also in memory as is and fake these syscalls. Um, I don't know how useful it will be, but it will be fun when it is implemented. That's crazy. Carlos, you got to run? 
Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, I really hope you enjoy the very detailed explanation through the C code that Jago just told you about the mem mem DL open. Uh, anyway, I think that was the the last part of the presentation. So I really hope you well you enjoy these these techniques. <laughs> it's insane. And hey, kudos and incredible congratulations, guys. Uh, that's some fantastic research, and I think y'all should be super duper proud of it. So, uh, hey, let's get it out there. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun, man. It was pretty fun. Yeah, it was great. Well, hey, thank you so much, all, and we'll let you get back to it. But hey, I'm excited to see what the rest of the community will run with this. Like, hey, I don't know, could we turn that into some crazy, like, implant beacon command and control service for? Yeah. fileless in memory shell code execution anytime everywhere <laughs> no, I, have, I have ideas this was for educational purposes oh, yes. we don't... <laughs> <laughs> educational purposes only yeah yeah obviously thank you so much everyone i'll let you get to it but great seeing you all again yeah thank you john thank, thank you for this time